Today I'm going through and completely resetting up my Benjamin Bulldog. So right now I'm getting my gun prepped to put on the suppressor and the suppressor I have is made by Pitbull Air Guns. PitbullAirGuns.com is where you can find them. And the uh, creator or inventor Matt is, came up with a really revolutionary design. First off, I'm Right now, I think he's the only one making a commercially available suppressor for the Bulldog. Two, it's the only 3D printed suppressor I know about. And three, it actually works. I was actually in on the testing for these suppressors. So I have like right here is the very first one that kind of was the prototype first one. Then you have the improved version right here. You have a long version and a short version. When those were invented, this was invented right here. This is a single shot tray for the 357 Bulldog. It says it right on there, both sides. So you just kind of click this in the gun. You can put your, your round right there and single load them. Uh, it was interesting because a lot of the big guys that we were seeing testing these were loading them one at a time to improve accuracy so this just makes that process a whole lot easier and the final suppressor here it is <laughs> don't laugh because it works and it works beautifully well here's your standard bulldog suppressor and as you can see that's the top piece right here the bottom part here is all expansion and air dispersion chambers and they take that bark of the the bulldog and hush it right up to nothing so the cool thing is when i got my first suppressor matt sent out these instructions and in the instructions he's like when you're done testing them if you guys want to just you know test them till they break and i'll send you new ones so i never really did break mine though but the good thing is he's included pictures so if you're like me and you don't know how to read <laughs> You can still put it on. So in order to put the suppressor on, you need to remove the barrel shroud, this giant metal trapezoid piece right here. And to do that, you're gonna to need to remove three bolts. At the rear of the gun, one right there. And at the front of the gun, there's one right there. And underneath, one right there in the Picatinny rail section. You can see it right there. So you're going to need to remove all three of those. A better man would know what size uh, hex wrench to tell you to remove those, but I don't know it, so just try them until you find it. So I'm going to get this off right here. And this is some awkward camera angles too, I know that. Today's an odd day. In order to get the right amount of light to make it look good on film and enough space where I can put my stuff, I'm actually sitting on the floor in front of a window in the corner of a room. So don't let that mere fact bias your opinion of me. So I'm getting the one at the bottom out right now. There's that guy right there out. And although all these screws are the same length, I like to put the same ones in the same holes that they came out of. I don't know if that's weird or if that's a, a wise thing to do, but that's just what I do. So I kind of lay them out in an order where I know exactly which ones they go back into. And they all look like they have a little drop of blue Loctite on them as well. Once you have all of your screws out, from watching the video that Matt has also made on how to install this, I believe you just kind of press forward on something. No. Okay guys, I want to pause this video right here. In this next step, you're going to see me take a rubber mallet and you're going to see me pop, 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 hit my bipod on the under rail to pop the shroud and cap off. You don't need to do this as a step all of its own. Skip right to the next step, which I'll put the time code like right in this area here. I'll put it up there. So skip right to there. I'm gonna leave the next bit where I do it and just so you guys can watch and laugh at me. Go to the next step where 
I'm holding the gun like this and using the bipod right here to slide the barrel shroud off. When the barrel shroud comes off, the end cap will come with it and it most likely pop off itself. Or if it doesn't, you can use your cleaning rod that comes with the gun or anything, you know, a broom handle, anything that's big enough just to slide it down and just tink, tink, tink the end cap right out and it'll, it'll be easy. Be a lot easier, trust me. Skip the step you're about to see, go to the next step and just do that. Slide the shroud off, use this cleaning rod to just tap it out from the inside. Way easier. All right guys, back to it. So since mine's never been off before, everything's still nice and tight from the factory and I can't really get it off by hand, I'm gonna take my bipod just put my bipod on. Actually, I'll put it on up here for a second. And I'm just gonna use it to help me apply some forward force on that. And I'm just gonna give it just a slight little tap with a rubber mallet and see what happens. So here's my rubber mallet. I'm just gonna ever so slightly start just tapping it up. I see it coming up little by little. I'm just gonna stand up and keep tapping. There it goes. And I have no damage on my bipod, which is a good thing. In the instructions it says if you have a scope on here, you can use the scope to kind of start to tap this off. And it says it's gentle enough where it won't hurt a scope. And I'm sure that's true, but since I don't have anything on top of my gun, the bipod method works for me since I have really heavy duty bipod. I'm just gonna put my bipod on there and do the same thing. So this step, the main thing is you're gonna use whatever you have on your top rail to just put some firm pressure down to slide the barrel shroud off. So let me show you a little up close what that's gonna look like. In my case, I have the bipod legs. I'm just gonna push down. Hopefully this won't go sliding on me. There we go. And now it can be slid right off, so. Like that. <laughs> and since I got the bipod on it, might as well just utilize it and set it right down. Your next step is you're gonna wanna remove this barrel stabilizer thing. And it's covered in oil. And let me get the tool that you got to remove that with. All right, we're almost done. This is what you've got left. This is what the gun looks like. Kind of like some cool little space blaster type thing. Really interesting looking. What you're gonna do here, is you're gonna grab an adjustable wrench. You're gonna adjust it so it can go around the barrel and lock onto two of those three points that's on the uh, barrel stabilizer. I'm gonna go rather large with mine so I don't have a risk of And this is the point where having three hands would come in really handy, but I only have two, so I'm gonna make do somehow. Oh. Here we go there. So I've got the gun kind of braced down on this uh, padded seat right here. And I've got kind of one leg holding it down while I hammer off with this end. And I've hit it just a few times and it's starting to move, but you'll see kind of the force needed to get it off, so. And that's 
almost off right now. It's about to pop. Since I've been touching this barrel and getting the oils from my hand on it, I'm going to go ahead and spray it down with some gun lube right here, just some Hornaday's one shot. And, uh, I'm just going to be generous and I'm not even going to wipe it off, I'm just going to let it set up and form a nice protection layer on there. Next step is to slide, I should have taken this. Uh, Stupid bipod off the bottom there, but the next step is to re uh, assemble the two halves of the gun. And I, yeah, I missed it there. There we go. Probably just pushing on this end seat it down there and it did. Go ahead and take my bipod off the top of the gun now. Basically what that whole process was enabling you to do was to get the end cap off the gun and to get the barrel band off the gun because the suppressor has its own barrel alignment. It aligns the suppressor the barrel and everything back up to perfect alignment in the shroud and so the bullet can exit the suppressor without clipping or anything like that. It's all very technical. I don't really understand it, but it works. I'm just gonna start right out with uh, the big boy here. It'll go on like this. Oh, okay, I see, I see. I see this has to come off so this can slot in. Ah, very clever. Make sure everything's going in. That's in, that's in. Everything's nice and tight, which is nice. This is like, I can't believe the tolerances are so precise with this here. I mean, you see me having to tap it in with my hand. That's just because everything's so tight. It's, I, it's not being forced in, it's just being snugged down. Matt, the creator's probably watching this video and cringing right now at what I'm doing to this thing. There's probably a real simple way to do it, but when you give it to me and, you know, this is what ends up happening. Step back. Perfect. Give it one more for good luck. Oh, that's, that's on. I mean, you don't even need to put the support bolt back in, but you should. Now the holes in the suppressor are not threaded. They're designed so when you go to torque your screws back in, your screws will cut their own threads going back through the plastic so everything mates up. I'm actually using a good amount of pressure to push them back in, just so it cuts correct threads in there. So you want everything kind of nice and lined up when you go to put these in. Everything's so tight already, I just put them in and barely snug them up. So th this is your uh, your final step right here. Put this on. And there you have it.
The one thing I did forget to mention is this suppressor has a built-in Picatinny rail on the bottom to take the place of the Picatinny rail that it covers up. You can actually put a bipod on this thing and rest the gun on it, which is awesome. I am super excited. This thing just looks insane on here. And the total overall length of the gun probably only lengthens by three and a half to uh, I don't even think that's four inches, three and a half inches, which is unheard of as well. This is insane. I can't wait to test fire this within the next few days. It's going to be crazy. I remember the first time I shot this thing without hearing protection. I only did it the one time. This time it should be indoor friendly is what I'm told by Matt who's tested that theory out as well. The last thing I want to say is this process will work with whatever pit bull moderator you're trying to install. The long one, the short one, or the mega one like I have here. So whatever one you have, just follow the same steps in this video. The only difference is for the two smaller ones without the bottom uh, air expansion chamber, you're going to leave the Picatinny rail on the bottom of the shroud, which is going to be pretty well obvious if you're doing it. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed. See you next time. And I don't see once again. Hmm. Oh, no, not a problem.